Live from Atlanta, Georgia, it's theCUBE. Covering Citrix Synergy Atlanta 2019. Brought to you by Citrix. Hi, welcome back to theCUBE. Lisa Martin with Keith Townsend. We're coming to you live from the show floor of Citrix Synergy 2019 in Atlanta, Georgia. And we're welcoming to theCUBE for the first time, Adam Jones, the Chief Revenue Officer of the Miami Marlins. Adam, it's great to have you on theCUBE. Pleasure to join you both today. So, baseball fans, White Sox, San Francisco Giants, Miami Marlins, always cool to talk sports and technology when we can bring those two things together. I think the San Francisco Giants and the Miami Marlins might have something in common right now, but regardless of the standings, everybody wants to go to a game. You have to deliver, as Chief Revenue Officer, a great fan experience. You got to make sure all the vendors are there to deliver what those fans want, regardless of the standings. People still want to go to the games. Talk to us a little bit about your role as the CRO of the Miami Marlins, how long you've been doing it, and then we'll get into what you're doing with Citrix. Sure, uh, so joined the Marlins 18 months ago as part of new ownership uh, and the new leadership team brought in to uh, reset the standard for what the Miami Marlins organization could be. Uh, we want to be a world-class sport entertainment enterprise. Uh, that means we're going to evolve beyond a traditional baseball team and ballpark. Uh, 26 years into the history of the franchise, eight years into uh, the operating rights of, of a ballpark, and there's a lot of work to be done. Uh, around those two assets, but as we take the organization forward, uh, we want to continue to broaden uh, that enterprise to focus on more sport and entertainment offerings. So, Chief Revenue Officer, we don't get many Chief Revenue Officers at a technology conference. Yeah. Help make the connection, what, what, you're a busy person, what made you take time out of your schedule to come to Citrix Synergy? Well, I, I think it's indicative of the culture uh, we're building within our organization that we're putting data at the very center uh, of, of our culture. We're going to make informed and timely decisions and we need uh, our technology to enable uh, that, that culture. And so when it came to where we were going to align uh, our IT group, and uh, it's a group that has built out a very robust on-prem in infrastructure over the past seven years, uh, following the opening of, of Marlins Park, uh, the alignment under strategy, uh, which uh, was my initial title coming in, and now Chief Revenue Officer, as I took on more uh, responsibility for the, the business side of the organization, uh, was a strategic uh, decision uh, to make sure that the infrastructure was meeting the requirements of the organization as we rapidly evolve uh, what our priorities are and what we need in order to deliver on uh, their very aggressive and lofty expectations for the organization. So this morning during the keynote, we heard a lot about the digital workplace, the experience, the employee experience being really critical for any type of organization's digital transformation. I just thought it was a really interesting viewpoint because we go to a lot of tech shows here at theCUBE all over the world, and we don't often talk about employee experience or even culture as a leading edge indicator of how successful a digital transformation is going to be, but employee experience is really critical to any business because those, whether those employees are interacting with you know, seven to 10 apps a day based on their job or they're interacting with your other end users, in your case, Marlins fans, making sure those employees are productive, have what they need in a personalized way is critical. Talk to us about what the employee experience means for the Marlins and also as an indicator on the revenue side. Absolutely, so we have an evolving workforce. It's very young, uh, across a very diverse enterprise of, of activities. Uh, what we've been able to do in partnership with Citrix since day one of the ballpark, where we went from an organization of roughly 100, 150 uh, employees around the team to 300 plus across the team in the ballpark, is uh, build out an infrastructure that uh, was very light in terms of hardware, focused very much on uh, the digital workspace, keeps us very nimble, uh, allows us to deploy capital in areas uh, that uh, we see tremendous value back in terms of application and utility. Uh, so as we continue to make uh, our workforce more mobile, uh, ask them to deliver and work at a, uh, at a higher rate of, of speed, we need to arm them with the tools that allow them to 
perform those roles in the office, out of the office, uh, engage beyond more just than an 81-day transactional relationship across Marlins baseball, uh, but how across 12 months out of the year and creating that 365-day touch point, uh, they still have tools and access in order to create those, those memories, those, those engagements that we want with the market. So talking about customer experience, Marlin Baseball is more than just the 300 employees. It is your partners, it's all of your uh, contractors. When I, when I go to a ballpark, I don't see you know, Mark, the hot dog vendor. I see uh, Mark, the guy that works for the Marlins. Mm -hmm. And my, my user experience, my customer experience needs to be excellent across that. As CRO, that's part of your responsibility, ensuring that the whole Marlin family is presented as one unity. Talk to us about, from not just a uh, user experience perspective, but also security ex uh, expectations of how you need to make that real for uh, your, your customer. Sure. Uh, on the experience side, what we're doing is resetting the standard not only for Marlins and for South Florida, but the industry as a whole. Uh, we've brought on a lot of great talent to the organization from across the industry that knows what's worked, what hasn't uh, across our peers. We're applying that, we're challenging conventional practice, trying to get out in front of the curve as to what is going to be the future of a game day experience, uh, what is a sport entertainment enterprise uh, more holistically. And so as a result, we have to arm our employees uh, with those tools that will allow them to engage consistently across all the touch points with our fans, with our, our partners. Uh, try not to centralize data to the point where only a select few uh, have and feel informed uh, and empowered to make decisions and take action, but disseminate that information, empower everyone uh, to deliver consistently across all of those touch points. On the security side, uh, being a public interest entity, uh, we're vulnerable, uh, we're a target. Uh, there's plenty of precedent around the type of uh, activity that these types of organizations can be prone uh, to, to try to have to address. And so security is uh, a number one priority of ours to make sure that the IP we're creating uh, maintains and, and is, stays ours, as well as all of the information that we're collecting around our customers, around our players, uh, stays within that secure environment as well. So if I think about going to a baseball game, which I love, there's so many sellable moments there. Whether I'm in the stands and I want to go buy food and beverage, or I want a new hat, or some sort of merchandise for my nephew or something. You have, as a CRO, you've got all these different sellable moments, not just in the ballpark, in, in the physical experience, but even online. So having this kind of cohesive opportunity to sell not just tickets, but food and beverage, merchandise, in person, on mobile, on a tablet, on a desktop, it's got to be a critical part of your strategy. Talk about the alignment with with yourself, and you said a lot of your IT guys have FOMO because you're here, but, but I imagine that those experiences are, are essential, that you have the right foundation and tech, technological foundation to deliver sellable moments that deliver. That's right, so the you know, ecosystem of sport is a fairly diverse one from the ticketing transaction to all of the in ballpark touch points to what we're trying to create is that 12 month relationship with, with a fan. So that goes into creating a lot of content and how we distribute that content uh, in order to continue to earn that engagement uh, well beyond 81 plus states of, of baseball. Uh, and the technology behind there in terms of our storage and our accessibility is what allows us to begin to personalize and tailor not only those, those core traditional transactions and touch points of sport, uh, but how we begun transition into more of that broader entertainment enterprise and making sure that we can deliver those as personalized and tailored as we can. So there was another Chicago team that showed the age of baseball. It was over a hundred years before sure. they won a... Uh, another a, Chicago a, team. Yeah, another Chicago yeah. team that won a, a championship. So baseball has a lot of tradition. You, you, you're in a unique opportunity that you're coming into a new ownership, but still, baseball has traditions that are hard to compete against. So let's talk about what are some of the cultural changes and opportunities that you see that uh,
baseball needs to engage and where technology can help. Sure. Well, I think an interesting uh, thought around baseball and where it's been scrutinized as whether it be pace of play uh, or number of games of not keeping up with the times, not being as snackable, short form consumption as, as other sporting content. As everything tracks that way, baseball starts to differentiate itself in terms of the ability to create a very distinct and differentiated experience to uh, a millennial, to a family, uh, to uh, an older consumer who has grown up with the traditions of, of baseball. And so while baseball needs to continue to innovate and modernize, there's actually this interesting uh, equilibrium as to how much it continues to challenge those traditions that differentiate it from many other points of contact uh, and where it should continue to preserve those elements to, to, to hold what has been generational uh, type engagement. You know, a great example of that is MLB.com and being able to watch a game anywhere. Mm -hmm. Baseball does an amazing job of uh, embracing digital transformation, at least in, in, in baseball. One of the things that we talked about, or the, that David talked about on stage today, is the seven trillion dollar opportunity. That's that's big, even in baseball numbers. Like yep. baseball, there's no bigger sporting numbers than baseball. But seven trillion dollars is opportunity. Where, what are you excited about coming out of this show when you look at some of the uh, potential gain deficiencies from some of the automation announcements that were made today? Uh, for our organization, while there has been significant investment in infrastructure, great collaboration with Citrix uh, up until this point, the exciting uh, transformation us is our migration into more uh, of a hybrid cloud environment, uh, which is going to allow us to onboard a, a number of new applications, tools for our sales team, our service team, our game presentation groups uh, to continue to innovate and challenge how they've gone to market in, uh, in the past. Uh, and having Citrix as a partner uh, that has that environment uh, for us to step into, one gives us a ton of assurance uh, in, in taking that, that next step. Um, and, and having someone that continues to bring us new tools within that environment as well. So our ability to collaborate across the organization, uh, I, I'd say we've only just skimmed the surface as to the true capability and power of a lot of the tools we've had in place, um, and very excited about unlocking the true power and potential of uh, that, that environment moving forward. So this is your second season with the Marlins. You spent 15 years at PwC, and when, before we went live, I thought, wow, what, that must have been a pretty big change going from PwC to Major League Baseball, but you actually have a, quite a history in sports. Tell us a little bit about that, and maybe some of the similarities between Major League Baseball as an industry to other industries that kind of surprised you. Sure, organizations. Couldn't be different, uh, more different in terms of uh, profile and, and setup. Uh, what I did day to day, advising across uh, uh, sport and entertainment, uh, leading the sports practice at PwC, uh, positioned me for this incredible opportunity or challenge uh, that is the Miami Marlins and what we're building. Uh, and this aggressive vision we've set as to how we're going to reset the standard and become world class as an enterprise. Uh, PwC and the history with the firm and professional services gave me a unique perspective as to how to take on many of the challenges we have. Uh, had the opportunity working across sport to really understand what works, what doesn't, so that we can avoid some of those missteps that the others who have taken on this roadmap ahead of us uh, have encountered. Uh, the breadth of infrastructure that a firm of PwC size uh, also gives you know, me a little bit more of a, uh, of a lens as to what the power and scale of a large organization can deliver in more of a small, mid-size uh, business form uh, and not accept size uh, or employee base as a constraint as to the types of tools and the sophistication of our technology that we can deploy uh, within a, a sports organization. Well, Adam, thank you so much for joining Keith and me on theCUBE this afternoon talking about what, how you are helping to make big positive impacts for the Miami Marlins. We appreciate your time. I enjoyed it, thank you. Go, go MLB. That's All right, right, for Keith Townsend, I'm Lisa Martin. You're watching theCUBE live from our first day of coverage of Citrix Synergy 2019. Thanks for watching.